They were already messing around before that and she texted her friends telling them not to wait up for her that night. So clearly she already knew what she was about to do. This was premeditated. The courts then found out that she deleted the text message conversation that she had with Sean before he came to the bar, all in an attempt to make him look guilty. People said he wasted his opportunity, wasted his talent, called him a loser, a criminal, a rapist, every name in the book, drug his name, only he didn't do it. So four years ago, this image was taking over the internet and it actually inspired some pretty dope memes. And you know the meme is dope when you got people who have no idea who Sean Oakman is, but they recognize this meme. This of course is a picture of Sean Oakman looking like an absolute beast standing over two players from Michigan State. During that time, we all expected that by now, Sean Oakman would be in the NFL doing his thing. That never happened due to the fact that he was indicted on a rape charge during the same month of the NFL draft. Now an indictment is simply a formal accusation, but you know, the internet. Recently, Sean Oakman was found not guilty of said accusation, but he's literally already lost millions of dollars just by being accused of something that the courts have now proven he didn't do. And that absolutely sucks. Today, we're gonna take a look back at who Sean Oakman was before the false rape accusations. We'll take a quick peek at his childhood and finish up with what's next for the 26 year old Sean. This is what happened to Sean Oakman. Cue the Wayne. Yeah, I'm not no quitter, cause I'm a go, I'm a go, I'm a go getter. Sean Oakman was born in Philadelphia back in 1992. When Sean was six years old, he couldn't figure out why his mom would sometimes leave him and his siblings alone for days at a time. One day, the curious six-year-old decided to follow his mom. He actually managed to tell her for about two blocks before she noticed that he was following her. Once she figured it out, she of course sent them home before he could ever solve the case. She admitted years later that she was going to get drugged. She was spending a ton of time in a local crack house. John's mom wrestled with her addiction throughout his childhood. She actually began using in an attempt to deal with trauma from her past, which ironically was an actual sexual assault. Sean and his family lived in extreme poverty and they had to deal with everything that comes along with that. You know, violence, theft, the whole nine. Not to mention their mom was an addict, which put them even closer to the drugs and all of the shady characters that are involved in that life. Sean and his siblings had to stay on their toes in order to finesse child protective services when they came by making everything out to be fine because they obviously didn't want to split up with their mother. When CPS had found out in the past that the kids would sometime have to go days without eating, they'd split the kids up and put them in homeless shelter until their mom could get on her feet and get her kids back. Sadly enough, Sean's earliest memories come from him being in a homeless shelter. When Sean was 10, he was separated from his mom again. This time though, she was taken to prison. And in a strange twist of fate, this actually ended up being one of the best things to ever happen to Sean. And according to him, it saved his life. Turns out Sean and his brother were adopted by their uncle, an army veteran and previous foster parent, Ken Roberts, along with his wife, Tracy. They had actually moved on from foster parenting at that point, but of course, they couldn't say no to family. This provided Sean with the stability he needed and a young boy needs a father figure. These are just facts. When it came to his ability to speak, read, write, etc., Sean was actually way behind the other 10 year olds. But his uncle constantly pushed him to be better, forced him to take speech classes, forced him to take harder classes during high school and not just try to skate by. And this greatly helped Sean's development. Sean was always too poor to pay the fees to participate in football as a kid. Therefore, he didn't even begin playing a sport until he got to high school. Literally after one JV game, they had to move this man up to varsity, probably in an attempt to protect the other JV kids. I mean, this dude is a beast. He was nasty on the basketball court too, leading his team to a state championship during his junior season but football was clearly his future as it just came naturally to the man. Here's a quote from Sean about when he first started playing football. It was easy. I already had the aggression. I already had the pain and the anger inside. So when coach told me all I had to do was hit people, I was like, okay. 
During his junior and senior seasons in high school, he had 116 tackles and 17 sacks. When he committed to Penn State, the assistant coach Larry Johnson pulled over and started screaming in excitement on the side of the highway. This was a big deal. Turns out Sean had never seriously considered any other school. He wanted to play for the legend, Joe Paterno. Unfortunately, after Sean's red shirt year, Joe Paterno, the whole reason Sean went there in the first place, was fired midway through the 2011 season due to the Jerry Sandusky situation. When Bill O'Brien came in, he implemented a zero tolerance policy in an attempt to kind of give a 180 to the program. You know what I mean? Now, what happened to video zero tolerance policy? You, you know, you just know Sean ended up getting in trouble for something ridiculous. And you're right. He was in the cafeteria and he realizes that he doesn't have enough money on his, his meal card to get a $7 hoagie. All right, the sandwich. So he decided to attempt to walk out of the cab with the sandwich without paying for it. And he got caught. Who's petty enough? Who's petty enough to chase this man down over the sandwich? Either way, man, stealing a sandwich is, I mean, it's just not a smart move, bro. It's not a smart move. Like somebody could have swiped for you, bro. With that being said, Penn State took this to the absolute extreme and it was unbelievably unnecessary. According to this article, he was fined and charged with a misdemeanor for stealing a sandwich. Then two days later, Bill O'Brien kicked him off the team. Not over no sandwich, man. Now, according to Sean himself, there's a little bit more to it. He later admitted that he had been a bit of a problem child and Bill O'Brien felt early on that Sean might be an issue due to him being late for workouts and not showing enough discipline. I guess without his uncle around, he may be slacked off. Sean also said that Bill did warn them strongly that there would be a zero tolerance policy. And when it comes down to it, I'm happy that Sean took accountability for that because it is true. He could have easily avoided that situation by doing the right thing. There was a lot of other options there. There was more options than don't eat or steal this sandwich. Like there was hella other options. And unfortunately, or maybe fortunately for him, Penn State punished him to the absolute extreme five months after the cafeteria incident sean transferred to baylor sean oakman decided to wear number two at baylor for a very simple reason it represented second chances and dude fell in love with the university he really liked the fact that it was okay for him to express himself there and he definitely did with the tats and the green hair and, but that was a lot different from penn state where you had to be clean shaven and basically you know like a like a robot around that thing he also felt a sense of family over at baylor and began to let his guard down a bit it seems like they figured out the food thing at baylor as well because Sean put on 40 pounds after getting there. Dude was weighing 275 pounds, but with only 6% body fat. Now I know DK Metcalf out here hitting 1.6% at 228, which is just stupid. <laughs> but don't sleep on your boy Oak, man. Dude's a specimen. In 2013, Sean got into an argument with his ex-girlfriend. According to reports, she called the police, but later refused to press charges. That's one of those iffy situations that kind of came and went. I don't want to spend a ton of time here, but I wanted to definitely mention that. On the field that year, Oak recorded 33 tackles, two sacks, and a forced fumble. But his best season came in 2014 when he was a junior. 48 tackles and 10 sacks. Dude beasted out and was projected as a first round draft pick. But he decided that he wanted to make a run at not being just a first round pick, but being the number one overall pick. And y'all already know, there is little to no upside on returning for your senior season after having a good junior year. Go pro, please go pro, bro. And I'm not even making this video right now. Sean returned for his senior season. And just like he had hope, the mock drafts were saying, yeah, he's projected as the number one overall pick dude's gonna go number one he's gonna beast out this year easy didn't live up to the hype battle injuries all season didn't perform very well and his draft stock dipped from the number one overall pick from a first round pick from a second round pick to a likely third or fourth round pick 
Now you would have thought his performance at the senior bowl would have helped. Dude had two sacks and a forced fumble. But reports came out saying that he looked really bad in practice. What are we talking about? Practice? After his senior season production dip, Sean remained on some teams boards just because he was still seen as a freak athlete. But running a 496 at the combine did not help that narrative. He only did 23 reps on the bench press and a lot of teams were disappointed. At that point, he was seen as a boom or bust prospect. But with the upside he had, I promise you, somebody was going to take a chance on Sean Oakman and there's a very good chance we've seen this with plenty of DNs. He gets to the league and he might not become that dude immediately, but he became that dude eventually. And either way, he still would have been getting drafted and he still would have got paid. But that never happened. Things just kept getting worse for Sean. In April 2016, Sean Oakman was accused of sexual assault by a woman in Austin, Texas. The woman said she met Oak at a nightclub, walked with Oak to his apartment, and then he forcibly removed her clothes and sexually assaulted her. They asked Oak about the situation. He was like, yeah, we had consensual sex. Again, as of a few days ago, the courts have proven that to be true, but Oak was publicly seen as guilty immediately. And again, a lot of that had to do with the fact that his reputation had already taken some hits. He'd already been accused of a few things, not this, but a few other things. And so, you know, people was already just paying him as guilty. And while it's true that he had made some mistakes in his past, it did not mean that he was guilty of this. But during that same time in 2016, Baylor was becoming more and more known for these sexual assault cases, cover-ups, and not taking it seriously, and all of this got lumped in with Sean Oakman. As a matter of fact, he became the poster child for it. Following the sexual assault charge, NFL.com posted an article saying that Sean Oakman was undraftable now. This all took place two weeks before the NFL draft. Like can you imagine and sure enough a guy who was projected to go number one overall just 12 months earlier would now go completely undrafted sean had lost it all just that quickly people said he wasted his opportunity wasted his talent called him a loser a criminal a rapist every name in the book drug his name only he didn't do it a few days ago, the clip you're about to watch started popping up in my Instagram DMs and all over my Twitter mentions just constantly. Shout out to everybody that sent this to me. I saw the first one though, I promise you. Either way, let's check it out. The they slander my name. They fire my coach. <laughs> and I felt like all that, all that was on me. <laughs> we coming for everything. We coming to get everything back. Because everything is ours and it should have never been taken away. Emotional clip, man. I mean, imagine having your entire livelihood taken from you, having everybody turn against you, having people talk crazy about you, all because of something that you did not do. Bro, now I'll leave a link in the description to the article that kind of sums up the case and where I got this information from, but I do want to point out just a few things from the case itself. The accuser was actually the person that invited Sean to the bar. They were already messing around before that and she texted her friends telling them not to wait up for her that night. So clearly she already knew what she was about to do. This was premeditated. The courts then found out that she deleted the text message conversation that she had with Sean before he came to the bar, all in an attempt to make him look guilty. Witnesses say when they were at the bar, she was all over dude and seemed very happy to be with him in public. Like, this is consensual. Now, I don't wanna get demonetized and I don't wanna make this video like R-rated, but I'm, I'm just saying they found traces of residue in places that you would not find that residue generally in an assault either way it took three years for a son to have his day in court but it only took a couple hours for the jury to deliberate and decide there was no evidence of sexual assault and Sean has been acquitted. John Oakman has lost millions. He's lost years off of his career and he's not the only one. Same thing happened to AJ Johnson and Michael Williams where they were lied on and it has cost them their livelihood, man. She literally attempted to ruin this man's life and that is wrong, bro. And while her plan didn't work fully, I mean, it still kind of worked, you know what I'm saying? Cause he should have already been in the league right now. He never gonna make the money back 
that he lost over these past three years. I'm saying even if he get to the league and get paid, he, he can't make up for those three years. That's gone. Now that Sean's out, he plans to make another run at the NFL. He's lost time and money, but he's only 26 years old and has been staying in shape. Will this story end here or will Sean make a miraculous return to the gridiron? He's obviously shooting for the NFL, but I think this is definitely a case where at the very least he'll get an opportunity in the AAF. And while the AAF is great, I just really hope this dude get an opportunity in the NFL because I feel like he had that opportunity taken away from him unfairly. Either way, that's all I got for you today. That's what happened to Sean Oakman. Peace. If y'all enjoyed this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button. For more football stories, news, and analysis, subscribe here and enable your notifications to never miss an upload. If you really enjoy the content, check out my vlog channel for a behind the scenes look at my YouTube and music grind, along with me answering your questions at length.